And now the conclusion of The King of Pangaea, written and read by Aidan Esslinger. The next morning, the king awoke to the sound of birds. Tweet, tweet, the birds sang. Although these birds had awakened him, the king did not think it was a reasonable time to get out of bed, so he went back to sleep. No more than a minute later, the birds interrupted the king's slumber again. Now the king was furious. As he started to think of a solution for the birds, he remembered what his mother and father had said the night before, that he could make any changes he wanted. With that memory present in his mind, he knew what he was going to do. So without thinking twice, he called Secretary Benjamin into his bedroom. Yes, sir, Secretary Benjamin asked. I want all of the birds removed from Pangaea. All of the birds, sir? The king exclaimed, that's what I said. Secretary Benjamin was appalled by the king's request. He wondered why he would request such a thing. King Harold, I don't think, just get it done. Secretary Benjamin shook his head and left the royal suite. And without a doubt, there were no more chirping birds the next morning. Although King Harold felt that he had solved a problem, in reality he had only caused a much bigger one. Pangaea's birds would eat two-thirds of the island's insects, but now that they were extinct, the various pests were infesting large parts of the country. Not only were they a disturbance to the people's lives, but they were invading buildings and homes, including the royal palace. Secretary Benjamin was forced to bring this problem to the king. King Harold gazed at Secretary Benjamin while ideas ran through his brain. Good ones, bad ones, and mediocre ones. But finally something stuck. I've got it, he exclaimed. Secretary Benjamin asked, what's your plan? We'll just build a new royal palace, one that's bigger and better. We'll put in a movie theater, a pool, arcade, and an ice skating rink. Secretary Benjamin wasn't exactly fond of this idea, but he knew the king would be persistent. A new royal palace, he asked. The king shook his head in confirmation. But this place has suited kings for nearly 300 years. How dare we? Blah, 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 King Harold interrupted. Just get it done. But sir, how will that solve our insect problem? That's for you to figure out, exclaimed King Harold. And that was that. Construction of King Harold's new and improved royal palace began immediately. Although the king was beyond satisfied with his request, again there were some consequences to his decision. The king wanted his new royal palace to be built in Capital Central, the middle of the continent. The only problem was that Capital Central was the home of many Pangean citizens. Those citizens were forced out of their homes and onto the streets. Homelessness was not something that Pangaea had ever experienced. The previous king worked voraciously to minimize the lack of poverty in the country, but it had seemed that King Harold didn't care at all. Months later, King Harold's royal palace was complete. He loved it. The bowling alley, the movie theater, the arcade, the trampoline park, and the go-kart track were all things that the king admired about his new palace. Of all those features of the new place, King Harold loved nothing more than his swimming pool and slide. The king practically swam every day in the swimming pool, and today was no different. Instead of handling the necessary business, King Harold put on his swimming trunks and headed for the pool. But to his surprise, it was raining. This angered King Harold immensely. Secretary Benjamin, he screamed out. Secretary Benjamin grabbed his umbrella and dashed downstairs to the swimming quarters where King Harold stood in aggravation. Yes, your majesty? It's raining outside. I'm aware, your majesty, Secretary Benjamin said, unsure of the king's intentions. Stop it. This unclear request appalled Secretary Benjamin. The rain? I don't believe there's a way to stop the rain, your majesty. It's a natural force of nature. It happens when the clouds King Harold stopped the secretary's lecture. Build a pavilion over the island so that the rain won't reach land. Oh, King Harold, that's not a good idea. Are you disobeying your king? King Harold asked. No, sir. Secretary Benjamin closed his eyes and took the king's commands to the construction hall. Within a few weeks, construction was completed on this new pavilion. The pavilion brought darkness over the island. Not only was the country using 75% more energy to provide artificial life for the country, but there was an immense decrease in farming and produce. Farmers were livid. Their crops had either been ruined by the artificial light or lack of water. This would eventually lead to a lack of food for all of Pangaea. Children were starving, elders were homeless, and families were suffering. Little did they know there was an even greater problem ahead. 
The slanted ends of the pavilion caused all of the rainwater into the surrounding oceans like an erupting volcano. Although the pavilion sounded like a good idea to King Harold during construction, it was not as smart of a solution as he had planned. The beautiful Pangea was in shambles. Death rates increased by 75%, crime rates rose by 44%, and the poverty rate had undoubtedly increased from 0 to 83%. The king should have been worried about these negative developments in the country, but in fact, he was unfazed. He continued to be ignorant of the problems Pangea was facing in the comfort of his royal palace. These problems persisted for years. One evening, King Harold was notified of very important visitors to the royal palace. Let them in, he ordered. It was his parents, the former king and queen Baden. They were unable to mask the sadness and guilt on their faces. Even their posture changed due to the destruction they saw upon their beloved country. Son, the former queen called. King Harold jumped out of his seat with excitement. Mom, Dad, how are you? It's so great to have you here. Did Benjamin show you around? Oh, he must show you around. This place is awesome. Really, I must show you. Let's go. As King Harold started to lead his parents out of the room, he felt a tug on his arm. It was his father. We need to talk, he said. Harold, have you not seen what has happened to Pangea? It's in ruins. It'll be fine, okay? Don't worry, said King Harold as he attempted to persuade his father. No, this is not okay. You must do something to fix what you've done, the queen added. Son, my great-grandfather told me a long time ago that with great power comes great responsibility. A king's crown is very heavy. Some can carry it and some cannot. The ability to carry the crown is not dependent upon the strength of your head, but the strength of your mind. What have you proven of yourself? Have you proven to have a mind strong enough to bear the weight of a king's crown? I don't understand what that means, the king responded. Former King Harry took a deep breath and thought back to before he had crowned his son as king. Do you remember how you liked how beautiful Pangea was? How you loved the overwhelming kindness people have for one another? Not only could you not maintain that, but son, you ruined it. King Harold thought about what his father had just said to him. His mind began to spin as he thought about all the things he had done as king. You're right, he declared. I want to fix this. I have to fix this. Boom, boom. The floor underneath the royal Baden's family's feet began to rumble. Boom, boom. What's going on? asked the queen. I don't know, King Harold answered. Boom, boom. Secretary Benjamin burst into the room. King Harold, King Harold, I have awful news. The water pressure is too high and is about to burst through the center of the island. What? How is that swoosh? A vast flow of uncontrollable water burst through the floor of the royal palace, shooting everyone into the air. This happened in several areas of the country. Buildings were destroyed and homes were demolished to the ground. The impact was so powerful that some Pangeans drowned. After everything was wiped from the face of Pangea by the destruction of the water, the large island was broken into several pieces. The seven largest pieces were later named Africa, Asia, Europe, Australia, Antarctica, North America, and South America. They are the seven continents of the world. I share my story to remind you that a crown of leadership is bigger than your personal desires. Listen to wise counsel. Consider the needs of others. Be stronger than I was. Yes, me, King Harold. I'm the one who caused the destruction of Pangea and will forever be known as the last King of Pangea.